So what excites you most about Cardano? What, what about the project um, is compatible the way you think? Yeah, what, there's a number of things that excite me about, about Cardano. And so the simplest thing that we can get from porting SingularityNet to Cardano, by which we mean initially putting a significant chunk of SingularityNet AGI tokens on, onto Cardano. So mm -hmm. what, what I want to do is make Singularity Net platform infrastructure multi-chain. I mean, we, th we had that in our minds from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So right now it's all on Ethereum, which is expedient at first, but it doesn't have to be all on one blockchain. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe, uh, maybe it will be optimal for it to be all on some other blockchain. But for starters, we want to make Singularity Net infrastructure multi-chain. So some of the AGI token supply remains on Ethereum and some migrates to, to Cardano. And mm -hmm. then how much remains on Ethereum and how much goes to Cardano, you know, that, that, that's sort of for the community and, and the market to decide, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if the Cardano portion works much, much better, right, then, right. then everything, should, everything should migrate there. If it turns out the Ethereum portion is more useful for some purposes, right. and the Cardano portion is more useful for some purposes, then, then so be it, yeah, right? So it's almost like um, hosting infrastructure, you yeah, know, yeah. Rackspace versus Amazon or Azure. It, these are ultimately cost and quality decisions that you make right. for your customers. And, and these are both moving targets, right? Like right at this exact moment, Ethereum is very, very frustrating to deal with, right? Like it's exactly. insanely slow and expensive to do simple things. But I mean, that's a moving target. There's Ethereum 2.0. It, it, it may be that it becomes great, great at, at, at something. I, I don't, I don't want to write it off, right? At, at, so I think the simplest thing that we can get from moving a, a big chunk of Singularity under Cardano is just a less inefficient and overpriced blockchain infrastructure, right? right? And I mean, that's obviously is, is critical to us uh, creating a singularity net that, that fulfills our goals and, and becomes a decentralized in intelligent system. I mean, the, the whole process of designing singularity and infrastructure was a matter of trying to artfully work around the slowness and expensiveness of, 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 of Ethereum, which has just gotten, gotten worse and worse. But there's limits to how, how much you can do there, right? So we, mm -hmm. need, we need a faster, cheaper blockchain. Cardano, I, I think, can be that. But there, there are other things that, that, that could be that also, right? So I think there's also deeper aspects of the Cardano vision and infrastructure that are interesting to me and that synergize with, with, our, with our singularity net code now and with our singularity net aspirations going, going forward. So I think that there's a big focus on formal verification in, mm -hmm. in the Cardano world. And as a mathematician, that's, that's very interesting to me, right? Like I would, I would love to see automated theorem provers running in singularity net and leveraging the singularity net decentralized AI network. I'd love to see these decentralized AI based automated theorem provers put to work, you know, verifying smart contracts running on Cardano and, and helping verify Cardano infrastructure code, right? right? So there's obviously there's, there's a number of steps to, to get to where this is really being done like on the, on a efficient and, and, and large scale basis, but it's, it's, it's some, it's fairly clear how, how one would do that. Actually, it's just, there's a number, there's a number of steps to get there. Yeah. And actually this is one of the most exciting parts about these types of partnerships for us because your needs help evolve our ecosystem. So when we look to the future, we say, okay, well, we've built a great blockchain, but what ancillary technology do we need to put into the system for it to be useful at a global scale for many different uh, utilities? We say, okay, should we do heavy investment in homomorphic encryption or into zero knowledge proofs or to multi-party computation, whatever? We look to our partners and we say, well, what do you guys need? Where do you want to go? Uh, what type of marketplaces do you want to be involved in? and how can we help build this technology together and make that consumable infrastructure to grow with you. One of the other things about Cardano that's not as well known at the moment, but it's a huge pillar of the project is, is the Volterra component of the project. So this is the governance layer of Cardano. And yeah. we kind of break it down into the who pays and who decides side of things. 
And uh, right now, uh, as the network is running, about $6 million worth of ADA is put into a treasury account. So $72 million a year at current market price for decentralized funding of projects. Uh, and what we decided to do is we we're trying to structure Voltaire in a way that there's a strong innovation management component to it. So uh, the problem I just gave is an example where I'd say I have a challenge, something like I want to codify all of U.S. law in a way that machines can operate and, and, and give me meaningful uh, answers about. Well, then there's a discussion of, well, how to do that, how much does it cost, how many companies need to be involved, and so forth. And this is really the crux of the Voltaire framework. It's a collection of tools to help that process along to go from an unstructured, open challenge to an actual plan of attack with funding behind it. Mm -hmm. So for example, SingularityNet's future evolutions or OpenCog's future evolutions can actually run through this process and get funding for it. So as your application evolves, not only does it provide use and utility, if you make a good argument of how enhancing that use and utility is beneficial to the Cardano ecosystem, you can now get funding for it. Mm -hmm. The coolest part is it's funding for the open domain. There's no notion of intellectual property or patents or big company owning these things. So the outcome of this process is the uh, evolution of all of the tech for everyone to the benefit of the entire ecosystem. Uh, so I guess the question I, I have for you is, um, uh, given that we have these capabilities and you know we're working together, uh, what would be the most successful collaboration in your mind if you had to say you made the decision come to Cardano and you look back at that decision five years in the, in the future, uh, what types of things had to have happened for you to say that that was a good decision, a successful collaboration in your mind? So th there, are, there are two separate but coupled high-level goals that, that I have in mind with SingularityNet and with the SingularityNet Cardano partnership. Mm -hmm. So what, one is making breakthrough progress toward general intelligence, right. right? Which is the closest thing to my heart as a, as a, as a researcher. So I mean, if, if our technology developments aligned so that through integrating SingularityNet with Cardano, you know, coupled with our ongoing work on OpenCog Hyperon, if that came out so that we could create AGI on this decentralized platform, I mean, that then, Hey, then, then I don't care if we got the other goals done, right? <laughs> I mean, then, I mean, then of, cor of, course, of course, that will be a tremendous financial windfall for everyone who's contributed, but it also ob obsoletes uh, much of the current money economy also, right? So that substantial progress toward AGI is a foremost thing in my mind. The, the, the other thing that's highly critical and that obviously ties into that is getting real traction in the world for decentralized AI. I mean, now almost all AI is done within a few large tech companies and uh, working closely with, with, with uh, some government agencies. And the vision of SingularityNet, as well as other projects in, in, the, in the blockchain meets AI space, I mean, the vision is that most AI developers and most AI users don't need to deal with big tech companies, right? The, the, the vision is that most AI should be done in a more peer-to-peer -peer way with individual developers or small groups creating AI agents that cooperate with each other and, and, and serve users who access AI through this decentralized network. Now, right now, we're starting to get a little traction on singularity net, but it's teeny, teeny, tiny sliver of, of what big tech is doing, right? So, I mean, we need to get meaningful traction so that at least a, a non-trivial plurality of the world's AI processing is being done in the decentralized ecosystem rather than, than by, by big tech. This is an example of, of when people say Cardano needs partners, Cardano needs projects. It's not the quantity of projects matters, it's the quality of the projects and what they seek to do and what these projects do to the platforms that they're hosted on. Uh, so, uh, for me, to answer the question that I asked you, what's my hope out of the partnership and the growth of this over the next three to five years? Your needs force very difficult business and technical requirements on the capabilities of Cardano as a platform. And there's no reason to go and pursue these unless there's a commercial partner, a platform, an application that wants that 
much like CryptoKitties kind of forces the discussion of scalability on Ethereum, similarly, SingularityNet forces significantly more involved requirements on us. So it makes our system better. It makes me a better CEO. It makes Cardano a better protocol by having these things in our orbit and collaborating with them and asking questions of how do we actually service these needs and allow you to achieve the goals that you have. That's a very important way of looking at it. And I think in, in SingularityNet as well, people in our community are constantly right. asking me, well, Ethereum's too slow. Ethereum's too expensive. Why don't you move on to a faster blockchain? And of course, there's something, there's something to that. On the other hand, it's, it's a very narrow way of looking at it. Exactly. Right? And uh, what we need is not just a faster blockchain. We need a framework that will let us take the proto-AGI code now inside the OpenCog system and split it out across a decentralized global network so we get a general intelligent global brain that respects you know, data sovereignty and, and democratization. Right. And, I, and, and I, that's about more than just a faster blockchain, right? Exactly. And, and I cannot wait to have these conversations throughout the years, especially as we get into data privacy and how to mine that. Well, there's never enough time. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, this has been an interview with Ben and Charles uh, talking a bit about SingularityNet and Cardano and some great ideas. And I hope to do many more of these with many other partners. Thanks for a great conversation. Cheers. Cheers.